Hey guys, this is Angus, and today I'll be showing you how to turn cordless drills into low-cost, high-power robot gear motors. So, to do this, the tools you'll need are a screwdriver, this is a Phillips head, uh, quite a nice one, not all rounded over and destroyed, uh, a pair of side cutters, wire snips, you'll need eight M5 grub screws. These can be found at decent hardware stores. You won't find them at Bunnings. Optional tools. This is a M5 tap, which can help you tap holes for the grub screws. Uh, it's not it's not needed, but it does help quite a bit, and you'll see why in a bit. And just a disclaimer that combat robot building can be dangerous, so you undertake this at your own risk, and that if you're using power tools and all that sort of thing, use the appropriate safety gear. Okay, let's get started. So when you get your drill, it comes with this battery pack. Fortunately, these battery packs are crap. They come with really bad quality cells, and the drills are only $20, so the cells are terrible quality. And unfortunately, they're just useless for any sort of decent robot platform, so get rid of that. So the first thing we need to do is remove the left-hand threaded screw from the end of the gear motor. So this is threaded backwards, to what you'd normally expect. So it's not righty tidy, lefty loosey, it's the other way around. So it's lefty tidy, righty loosey. So basically, you gotta rotate it clockwise to undo it. Sometimes they're really tough, sometimes they're loose, so it's, uh, this one's hardly turned. So it comes out quite un unnaturally, but this is undoing it. And it comes out. So do not lose this screw. You cannot buy these anywhere, and you need them to fasten things onto the end of the gear motor. So keep this safe, because just imagine it's like a $20 screw. So that goes there. So the next thing we need to do is remove the chuck. So this chuck is threaded on conventionally, so that is you need to turn it anti-clockwise to undo it. Sometimes they're threaded on really tightly, and occasionally what you need to do is get like a large Allen key or something and whack it to jolt it loose, but um, let's see how this one is. This one's also, <laughs> this one's also hardly tightened up, so that came off easy. So that's off, and you can see that's the end of the, uh, the gear motor there. So the next thing you need to do is remove the casing. There's all these little case screws here that all need to be undone. So you just get your Phillips head and uh, get to work. So, with all the case screws undone, it just pops apart. There's really not much inside a cordless drill. There's a little trigger unit, which has a basic speed controller uh, circuit in it, and the clip for the battery. And that's it. So, this is what we want. This is the gear motor from the cordless drill. Freed from its drill prism, as it were. Let's get the wire snippers to snip the wires off. So this is called the clutch unit which is what's used to adjust the torque for the uh, conventional use of a cordless drill, you know, adjusting how much force is used to undo a screw or tighten up a screw. So we don't want that in combat robots. We want the gear motor to give out all its force or nothing, or brake drying. So we need to get rid of this. So the clutch mechanism works with a spring and lots of little ball bearings. And this, when you pull this out, they'll go everywhere. So Usually you could have a little container or something to sort of pour them into. So do that here. Right, so you see all the ball bearings come out of those holes. So, we got our gear motor, but it's not quite ready yet. Because when you turn the shaft, you see nothing's actually happening. Nothing's stopping that shaft from turning because we removed the clutch. So, what we need to do is take these grub screws and we tap them into those holes in the gear motor to lock the clutch up so that when the motor turns, it turns the apple shaft. So, using your Allen key and your grub screw, if you're careful and have a bit of skill, you can just force these in to the gear motor's housing like so. And you force them all the way down but 
that's a little bit tricky. So you can use a tap, this is an M5 tap, to give you a sort of a head start, like so. Then once you've sort of done the first two turns or so, it really helps you sort of get the thread started. And then you can force them in. Okay, so this is how you set your grub screws into your gear motor. Here I've got a fully modified gear motor, and here I've got a ring gear from a drill gearbox. You can see in the gearbox where it sits, what you do with your grub screw is you sit it between those ridges and it stops this from spinning and lets the motor transfer torque to the output shaft. So when you're tapping these grub screws, you want to tap them just enough to get in between those ridges but not push too much, otherwise you'll put pressure on the gearbox and lock the whole thing up. So it's a bit of a fine art, it takes a little bit of practice, but as you're tightening them up, just give the gear motor output shaft a little bit of a turn to make sure that you're not locking it up too much. So one grub screw isn't enough for combat robots, if you're just making this for a normal robot platform, two would be fine. But for combat robots, I usually use four. Um, and that's usually enough, you don't need to do eight, that's just insane. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've done and tightened up the last four grub screws. And then that's it. So this is a $20 high power robot gear motor for your combat robot or autonomous platform or whatever you like. I'll show you how it runs. So thanks for watching. Next episode I'll be showing you how to attach a wheel to this. So because we're Australian, we don't have access to Colson casters or whatever the Americans love to use, which is a shame. But we do have these. These are red wheels from Bunnings. And next episode I'll be showing you how to attach these red wheels to your gear motors. So thanks for watching. Uh, keep sharing around the uh, Robo Wars Possible campaign. Um, if you want to compete, you can register on there. We'd love to see some new machines this year. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the support. See you later.